Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna to talk about something that is super exciting, and that is the Dell PowerEdge C6525. Now the Dell PowerEdge C6525 is not just your normal 2U Dell PowerEdge server that we've been seeing for years. Oh no, instead, the Dell PowerEdge C6525 is actually a 2U four node system. And what gets even a little bit more exciting than that is that it's not Xeon based. Instead, this is an AMD Epic based server, specifically designed for the AMD Epic 7002 series codenamed Rome. And that means you can put up to 64 cores in each socket. You can have two sockets per machine, which means you get 128 cores per node. And then in the Dell PowerEdge C6525, you actually get up to four nodes, which means that you get 512 AMD Epic cores. And since you can run these things with SMT2, that means that you can actually get up to 1,024 cores per 2U. And that makes this system a one kilothread system. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the hardware of the Dell PowerEdge C6525. We're gonna compare it to some of the other options that we've seen both on the Xeon side, but also on the AMD Epic side, since we've done actually a lot of these servers, the 2U four node servers recently. We're also gonna take a look at the management, and then we're gonna look at some of the features that are just kind of comparatively just really interesting and kind of quirky about this machine. So that's enough of an intro, let's get to it. So let's start with the chassis. The Dell PowerEdge C6525 comes in the Dell PowerEdge C6400 chassis. Now, this is a shared chassis with the C6420, which is actually an Intel Xeon platform. And so this, this system was really kind of first launched for Xeon. And now we have AMD Epic nodes that go into that shell. Something that we wanna note is I did ask Dell whether or not you can just go mix and match the AMD Epic and Intel Xeon nodes. You can do that on some of the other systems in the market and you cannot do that on the C6525. I think they have some kind of firmware that needs to get updated. So that's just something different on this server. We specifically had the 24 by two and a half bay chassis, but there is a 12 by three and a half inch. So if you wanna use big hard drives, you can do that too. Generally what that means in these types of servers is that you get six bays per node and you have four nodes and that gives you your 24 drive bays. Just behind the drive base, we actually have a set of four hot swap fans. And so if you think about it, you actually get a total of up to a kilothread of performance and you only have four fan modules in the system, plus the power supplies. And those fan modules are actually a big deal because in the world of 2U4 nodes, where the fans are located actually has some really big impacts. And generally when we have the fans in the center like this and not on the nodes themselves, we tend to get better power efficiency just because we have fewer fans and we get to use larger fans. Now, some other designs in the market have the fans that are actually attached to the nodes themselves. So they use one U fans on each of the individual nodes. And that means that you have a lot more fans. The fans are smaller, which means that they're less efficient. So part of our standard 2U4 node testing is that we actually look at the power efficiency of these systems versus if we used 1U servers by themselves. We're gonna to get to that a little bit later, but it turns out that with the Dell PowerEdge C6525, like other systems that have this configuration, we tend to see a little bit better power consumption than we do on the nodes that actually have cooling directly on the nodes themselves. From a power efficiency standpoint, this is actually really good. In case you wanna know why anybody would even do it the other way, the answer is that a lot of companies and organizations prefer to have nodes self-contained. And so when they service the nodes, they can pull them out and they have all the fans, they have the entire nodes and they can service them in that level. Whereas it's a lot harder to get to the mid plane fans in a C6525 than it is if they're just on the nodes themselves. So that's the reason. So let's keep continuing on the chassis level before we get to the nodes themselves. And if you look at the middle of the chassis, you see all the power distribution and all of that kind of complex in the middle. Now, something that's interesting on the Dell PowerEdge C6525 that if you look at a lot of modern 2U four node systems is that a lot of the A-Speed AST2500, which is kind of the industry standard BMC, systems, they actually have BMCs that are at the system chassis level and they run management functions at the chassis level. Now Dell, I think because of iDRAC and iDRAC 9, they just don't do that. They don't put a controller in the chassis 
an iDRAC controller in the chassis. That's a big difference because the way that Dell thinks about managing these systems is that you have a collection of individual nodes and then you use open manage to go manage the set. Whereas if you look at how hyperscalers build and a lot of other organizations that use kind of more industry standard management interfaces, those systems tend to have BMCs because they think of it at a chassis level, they want the monitoring and then they want the individual nodes tied up through that chassis. And it's just something that because we do a lot of reviews, we kind of see these differences, but you probably wouldn't notice it otherwise. Moving to the rear of the chassis, we have the four nodes and we're gonna talk about all the nodes individually later, but the one feature that we do wanna talk about is power supply. Dell has different power supply options. You get 2.4 kilowatt, two kilowatt. I think they have a 1.6 kilowatt power supply option. So depending on the processors and how you configure the systems, Dell actually has power supplies that help manage that power efficiency by getting you right in the sweet spot of the power supplies. Okay, so let's talk about the nodes. Now you have four nodes, you access them through the rear of the chassis and you can pretty easily pull them out. Dell has a great mechanism for that. The connectors themselves are not just a standard Goldfinger PCB setup. There's actually high density connectors which help increase airflow through the system and that's a great feature that Dell has. We've seen that on some other systems like for example, the Cisco UCS systems have features like that and that's just something that's a kind of higher end feature. Once we get through the high density connectors that connect to the rest of the chassis, what we have is, let's talk about CPUs here for a second. So with the Dell PowerEdge C6525, the system's actually designed to be able to accept a pretty wide range of processors. And what that means is that you can go put in low end processors that are you know, maybe 100, 155 watts in that range, but you can also go up and you can have 225 watt processors in there, like such as the 64 core, 48 core offerings. Our test system was equipped with AMD EPIC 7452 processors, which they're pretty good. They're 32 core processors. We actually did a review of those not too long ago. And we're gonna talk a little bit about performance in this chassis a little bit later in this video. Now, because we have two U4 nodes, there are some sacrifices that we do make in order to just physically fit the form factor. And one of those major changes is that we can only have eight DIMMs for each CPU. Now, the AMD EPIC 7002 series ROM can actually take up to two DIMMs per channel, which would be 16 DIMMs per CPU or 32 DIMMs per server. Now, on some of the larger platforms, that's definitely what Dell has. But on this particular platform, they have eight DIMMs per socket, which means they get 16 DIMMs per node. And that actually works out pretty well because the Rome series has eight memory channels. And so the PowerEdge C6525 is designed to have one DIMM per memory channel. And so you still get the full memory bandwidth, even though you don't get necessarily full DIMM capacity. And just drawing a quick simile here, when we look at the PowerEdge C6420 nodes, those are Intel Xeon nodes, but they do only support eight DIMMs per socket, just like this, but the on the Intel Xeon side, you only get six channel memory until we get to Ice Lake. Now let's get to one of the coolest features of the system that we did not get to test, but I kind of wish we did, but it would be a little bit harder to. Our system is air-cooled and it's really set up for these lower power processors, but Dell can go much higher. One of the major markets for this is actually the high performance computing market. And in the high performance computing market, sometimes people don't necessarily want just low power 32 core chips. They want higher power, higher core counts, such as the AMD EPIC 7H12, which is the 280 watt high performance computing processor with 64 cores, 128 threads from AMD. Now generally supporting anything up to 280 watts, what that means is that you're gonna look for something that's a little bit more in terms of cooling because, well, it's kind of hard to cool for 280 watt processors in a TU chassis, and it's even harder to manage to cool eight of them in a 2U chassis. And so for that, Dell actually powers with Coolit systems and there is an entire solution to go put water blocks in here and bring water into the Dell PowerEdge C6525. So that way you get more cooling and more efficient cooling. And for high performance computing data centers, that's actually pretty common that they're gonna have facility water these days. And when you have facility-based water, it's actually more efficient. So that's kind of why a system like the C6525 would wanna take advantage of that. Other big markets are things like virtualization. And if you think about it, even these 32 core parts that we have here, this is more cores than Intel currently offers on any of the Intel Xeon scalable first and second generation, and even the third generation Cooper Lake, if you, you know, wanna go there. But 
yeah, they only go up to 28 cores right now. And so getting 32 cores at a pretty low TDP and be able to stuff them in a box like this is something that's actually much different for the AMD side versus the Intel Xeon side. And it's something that Dell is definitely trading on. All right, let's get away from the CPUs and memory because that's exciting, but let's see what else is in the system. And one of the big features that Dell has here is the Dell Boss card. Now, a lot of operating systems, you wanna have mirror boot devices, but you might need a controller like a RAID controller to be able to do that, but you don't wanna use your primary high performance RAID controller just for boot devices. So Dell has the Dell Boss card. And I just love the name Dell Boss. I mean, and how could you not love the name Dell Boss? I mean, that is an awesome name for a boot device. So that allows you to take M.2 drives and use those for boot while freeing up your hot swap bays for your higher capacity, higher performance storage. Something that's interesting on the AMD Epic platforms is that they don't have platform controller hubs or PCHs that you would see on an Intel Xeon platform. So you have something on the 6420, C6420, like the Lewisburg PCH, and you don't have that in the system. So there's not that extra IC to cool but that also means that you do need to have features like boss if you want to have raid because well you need something to go do that let's talk expansion here for a second so our system had a single pcie by 16 slot and one of the really interesting features uh, that dell has in this is they actually support pcie gen 4 by 16 slots and technically they support up to two pcie by 16 gen 4 slots which is really kind of unique. A lot of the early AMD Epic systems and Epic Rome systems only supported PCIe Gen 3. Now we aren't really at the point where there are a ton of devices other than NICs and stuff like that that have PCIe Gen 4 support, but I think in the next couple of months, we're gonna start seeing a lot more. So this is gonna become more important. There's also another really interesting feature and one that we're gonna talk about a little bit more. In our test system, we actually only had one of the two PCIe slots populated, and that was kind of a bummer. We really wish that we had both of them populated so we could do a little bit more testing, but we just didn't have it. There is another feature that's actually kind of historically interesting in this system, and that is that this actually is using the OCP 3.0 NIC or NIC 3.0, however you want to say it, but the OCP NIC form factor. Now this is a PCIe Gen 4 and kind of forward looking even beyond that form factor. And this is something we're going to see in most other systems. I mean, most vendors have at this point decided that they're going to support it because all the hyperscaler guys said, yep, we're going to use that as our NIC form factor. And so instead of having a world of custom mezzanine cards and stuff like that, we actually have in custom LOMs, we actually have a standardized OCP NIC that's going to be common across basically the entire industry. So that's actually a really different approach for Dell. And it's one that's absolutely awesome that we're seeing in this machine. Now, if you want to know why this thing is so historically relevant, relevant, you have to look back a couple generations. Back in the day, in the, let's call it the Xeon 5500, 5600 generations, Dell pumped out a really awesome system, which was the Dell PowerEdge. I don't even know if it was PowerEdge even at that time, but it was the C6100 chassis. And the C6100 system was two U4 nodes for that Intel Xeon 55, 5600 series. And they went to big organizations. I mean, we're talking Twitter, Facebook, those types of organizations use that chassis because they were modular, they could scale out, get a lot of density, and they were super popular back in those days. And at STH, we actually have guides that are really complete in terms of looking at some of those older systems just from years and years ago on STH. But since that was you know, probably about 10 years ago or so, the market has moved on and big companies like Facebook have gone into the open compute platform. They no longer use Dell servers because they don't really you know, care about iDRAC at all. They wanna use their own BMCs. They wanna use industry standard BMCs and their own firmware on it. So they don't care about iDRAC. They also don't care about you know, Dell's margins or anything like that. So they want to go to white box vendors that can get them lower margins and they want to have custom form factors. So it really doesn't fit the model of the Dell PowerEdge C6500, C6400 series. But as you can imagine, this is where it comes full circle because now those hyperscalers are making innovations, specifically the OCP NIC 3.0 form factor. And now we have that integrated into these systems that Dell is selling to enterprises and high performance computing centers. So the world comes full circle in the computing world. And before we leave this OCP, Nick, I wanna talk about one other just absolutely crazy mechanical design feature. On the OCP, Nick, you're gonna see this little blue latch and this little latch you pull up and that is your lock for your OCP, Nick. So you might think to yourself, okay, I've pulled my sled out of the system. I need to service my Nick. Maybe I wanna do an upgrade or maybe I had a port fit something like that so I have to go pull this nick out so you pull the whole node out you go you pull this little latch up and now you have access to be able to pull the ocp nick out right and answer to that is actually no you can't do that which is insane instead 
the riser actually covers the OCP NIC and keeps it in there beyond that lock. So not only do you have to unlock the system, but then you have to remove the riser above it. And well, because that's just above it on that side, you actually have to remove the riser or unscrew the riser on the other side of the chassis, on the left side, to be able to get to the one on the right, to be able to pull out the NIC. So you end up having to basically dismantle two riser slot adapter things to be able to get to the OCP NIC and pull that thing out, even though there's an internal latch. When I saw this, I was totally speechless. I mean, what in the heck is going on there? Why? I don't know. The other thing I wanted to talk about on those PCIe slots and kind of going along with this is the fact that Dell is definitely not leading in terms of PCIe accessibility at this point. A lot of the other designs in the market now have actually surpassed what Dell is doing on a mechanical design here. These PCIe slots are nowhere near what some of the other vendors are doing in terms of PCIe slot accessibility in their 2U4 node chassis. And so I think this is something that Dell really needs to start innovating on if it wants to keep that high bar of having excellent mechanical design. This kind of seems like a system that was designed a couple of years ago and not something that's more modern. For example, recently we looked at an Intel Xeon based Inspur 2U4 node system and they have a awesome and probably one of the best PCIe slot systems around. I think the CS system was actually also really good in this. This is probably about the level of a super micro system in terms of accessibility. It's just not what we would expect, especially when you look at the rest of the Dell PowerEdge line, you just kind of expect a little something a little bit better here. I'm sure that there's some mechanical engineer out there that's gonna say, oh, well, we need to have all of these screws and lots and lots of screws for structural rigidity and all that kind of stuff. And that's great. But at the end of the day, if you had to go install something, it's gonna take longer in a Dell system than it is in another system, just because of this design. Now in the back of the system, you have a USB 3 slot, you have a iDRAC management port, so you do have an out-of-band management port. You don't have networking, so that's really kind of based on the LOM, or in this case, the OCP NIC 3.0 slot, so you're gonna to wanna to use your that for your high-speed networking. There's also a direct micro USB port for iDRAC. One of the things that I think is a little bit different here is that because of the way that Dell constructed the system, there is not room for a full VGA cable. VGA is really old, but it's also kind of the standard in the data center. If you have a KVM cart, you most likely have VGA based systems today. It's not super expensive to go and change that, but it is a little bit different that Dell is using a micro display port here. It's just another cable, another adapter, maybe changing some monitors, whatever it is, but it's something that's a little bit different. Now, some other vendors are actually using high density breakout cables. And so it is kind of nice that Dell isn't relying upon that, but it is something that's a little different. In terms of management, this is iDRAC. This is iDRAC 9. This is the same management scheme that you see on standard PowerEdge servers. So if you have a high performance, if you're doing a hyper-converged system or something like that, you get the same manageability that you get on a normal PowerEdge, and that's great. And since we have standard iDRAC, even though it's an AMD system, we still get to go put it into Open Manage. And because we get to use Open Manage tools for this, all of the kind of standard tooling that you would have for a normal Dell organization and for your servers in a Dell organization will work with this, which is awesome. Let's talk about power and performance real quick. In terms of power consumption, we did a comparison using our STH sandwich where we go when we put the PowerEdge C6525 between two other 2U4 node systems, and we just heat up the top and bottom to make sure that we're getting a more realistic version of what the system would see in the real world. What we found a couple years ago is that if you take a 2U4 node system and you leave space on top and bottom of it, you actually get better cooling, and that better cooling means that you get better performance in a lot of cases if you don't have good cooling in the chassis itself. That leads to better performance numbers in a test scenario than you would actually get in real world deployments. So what we do is we put a sandwich together and we use two 2U4 node systems top and bottom to heat up the both surfaces and be able to go and get more realistic power and performance numbers out of this. What we saw on the performance side was we actually saw performance that was very good. In fact, we saw performance that was almost on par, it was very, very close to what we would see in four 1U servers that are dual socket. So what that basically tells us is that we're getting almost the same performance, even though we're getting twice the density that we would in those separate platforms. And that's really just what we wanted to see. If you wanna see more on the performance of the AMD Epic 7452 processors, we have a whole review on that in the STH main site. We're gonna link that in the description. The other advantage of the sandwich is that we get to see the impact of power consumption. So what we can do is we can take the power consumption of the 2U4 node chassis and compare that to four 1U servers that each are dual socket. 
And when we did that, what we found was we actually got a decent amount of power savings. Now this isn't saving 20% power or anything like that, but single digit percentage. And when you're in a data center and you're densely packing these high performance systems, that sing those single digit percentages actually make a big difference. Now we are gonna caveat that and just say that this is with kind of lower TDP processors, not necessarily at the high end. So we are testing specifically for that. We can't change the processors that are in the system because Dell actually blows field programmable fuses with iDRAC and their firmware. So you can't actually take processors out and put them in here and then put them back into other systems. A lot of people don't know that, but that's a feature of Dell systems. There's some other vendors that do it, but still overall, if you are looking to consolidate and you don't necessarily need all the dim capacity, you don't need all the expansion capacity and all that kind of stuff, and you just need higher density compute, this is actually a really good option because the fans are being used more efficiently. The power supplies are being used more efficiently. And so you should definitely look at something like this, man, that was a ton to unpack, but hopefully you enjoyed this look at the Dell PowerEdge C6525. Hey, if you made it this far, why don't you click subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come up with new content. We have a whole bunch of Dell and AMD content coming up in the pipeline. So you definitely want to subscribe for that. And as always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.